Okay, I'm uh, back to the uh, original camera that I first made videos with. My GoPro uh, camera is not working well and I lost three of the batteries that were also worn out so I can't use that. And uh, the batteries are expensive and I'm on a fixed income. So it's down to the batteries about 43 bucks or something like that for a pair of them um, versus five gallons of fresh oil of this machine. So uh, this machine gets fresh oil. But I'm going to make fewer videos because of that probably until after the first of the year. I, I really need to update everything. But I wanted to do this video because I said I would do it. Now what I have, let's see if I can get this, uh, this is a, a real typical chuck <laughs> probably not many people know about. Uh, this is a replacement chuck, it's a bison chuck, and uh, this is a 12 and a half inch with a 4 inch hole. This thing weighs uh, probably close to 150 pounds. It's extremely heavy. Now, this is the chuck that came with this machine. It was on the machine. I looked at this and I go, what in the world is that doing on there? But actually, uh, this axle is a little bit different and it, and it handles this chuck uh, exceptionally well. With the axles and uh, bearings, the spin, the Timken uh, bearing arrangement um, has uh, 27,000 pounds um, radial load capacity and over 11,000 pounds actual thrust capacity. So, <laughs> 150 pound chuck arm it doesn't matter, and it doesn't bother the head because of, of the gearing in this uh, 24 speed uh, geared head way. But this is a chuck that uh, um, uh, one local outfit that uh, worked in well drilling, water well drilling, had a 22 inch, probably by a hundred and, I don't know, 10 foot better, so a uh, Cadillac with a four inch spindle hole. And uh, this would be the ideal replacement chuck versus the one that came on the machine, which they were pretty good, but this thing is built much uh, stronger. And uh, as we get along here, I'll point out the features of it. And I want to also point out that Bison USA has a website and they have grinding chuck jaws and they're going to sh they will show you how to grind the chuck jaws except for what i'm going to show you they left that out and whether you like it or not this is something that uh, i learned from people two generations before me so i didn't invent this and it's like uh, uh, in the bison site, if you proceed, you are doing it at your own risk. You know, it's, it's uh, actually can be dangerous. So, the object is to load these jaws. And first we'll take a look at them. Uh, let's see how they're doing, okay? Let's see, I'm going to have to kind of adjust things so you can see what I'm going to show you. I've showed this stuff before. I think you've seen it before. Okay. Okay, let's close these things up. All the chips on here is this wrench that I modified to use this monster. And I'm going to use this chuck for salvaging, but I still want uh, it to run true. So let's get it to grab this bar, and, and this is what happens. 
to chocks that get worn. Okay, we're going to rotate this. Stick it in there, and I'm going to rotate it until I can't turn it. Right? Right there. Now see, it's bell-mouthed. The jaws are splayed. Okay, right there. Devalues this chuck $3,000. This chuck costs 3500 and some change from Travers. They, these things have been available for around 40 years. There's at least 10 of them on eBay. Everything's overpriced on eBay. One's in fairly good shape like this. Uh, up to a thousand bucks, 600 to a thousand bucks. But locally, these things are worth 300 to 400 dollars. And I've seen three or four of these come up. Because when they get that like that, they're not worth very much. They want to spit stuff out. Even when you get it, you know, the uh, piece of steel out further, see? Let's get it out further and, and just get it to grab, and I can't turn it. Whoop. <laughs> I'm going to bang that camera. Okay, it's just grabbing right there. Right there. See, I can still... The splay's so bad, it's grabbing on the uh, outer jaw there. On the so, what we got to do is, uh, and then there's some runout issues. I'll show that. I, I've got the runout uh, checked out. I'll, I'll show some, I'll put some photos of this thing. Um, taken apart. And you can see it's all stained inside. It was full of uh, the old uh, cutting fluid that stains the trichloroethane. Okay, that stinks. But this thing's all cleaned up. It, it's actually in pretty good shape except for that, right? No worth beans. It's horrible. I don't know. It looks like uh, at least 10,000 is going to have to come off those uh, jaws, but they're deep. Quite, there's quite a bit to work with there. See? I'm going to give this thing some new life. Okay. Now, we're going to load these jaws. And uh, the, uh, this is the method I'm going to use. This is, uh, I first seen this at a sawmill and a Navy machinist doing it. There's different ways to load jaws. This is uh, a factory method and it's shown on an early uh, World War II America Goes to War film. But it shows it pretty darn quick. I had a comment from somebody that, uh, that's not going to work. There's no way they could put even pressure on those jaws. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't care what you think. This works. You do it any way you want to. I'm just going to show you the way I do it. I don't care how you do it. That's it. I just don't care. Okay, no. I was going to do, uh, have to get a bigger ring to grind this uh, at the 4-inch, uh, it would be a 2-inch radius. But I decided I didn't really uh, want it to work like that. I'd rather it grab better on smaller material and bite into uh, larger material that I'm salvaging and just generally working. Because I'm not working 4-inch... Uh, Induction hardened chrome plated um, sh uh, hydraulic shaft like uh, it's used in all Caterpillar. Now, uh, this is the ideal chuck for working that versus any other chuck. You don't want to set true or anything. You just want to chew running real powerful chuck like this for general work. And we'll get this thing run within a thou, I bet you. 
So that's how I'm going to load the jaws, okay? And I think I got to run out to 20 thousandths or something on this. Uh, um, I checked all the internal surfaces. Everything is 3 thousandths or under, which is good for a chuck like this. The fit of the scroll, the, the pivot, these things haven't worn. Though the chuck's been uh, used considerably. So that's the setup there, and uh, uh, I will be back. Okay. Okay, and we are on. Now, I mentioned before that Bison USA had a website, I'm sure they do, but they also have a YouTube channel, and they show everything about grinding um, chuck jaws. They show grinding these uh, outside jaws here, okay? But they don't show grinding the main jaws. I'm going to show you a method of grinding the main jaws. <laughs> okay, so this chuck has also axial and radial runout. At the end of this, about five inches out, it's over, uh, oh gosh, 25 thousandths. Second, let me move in, get more of just the radial run out here. That's about 12 thousandths. Now, I went around on the pinions and I found that I got consistently the least run out using number two. Let's see, number, that's number three. Number one's right here. It's uh, marked with uh, zeros here. Okay, that's the master opinion. They describe that on the Bison YouTube channel. <clears throat> they also describe uh, lubing these uh, chucks with uh, apparently white lithium grease, which I don't think is the worst idea. They really brush it on. You might take a look at that, but uh, I, I choose not to do that. Uh, I, I can say that if you're never going to put any more lube on it forever, use white lithium grease. Because <laughs> that stuff will stay better than anything else. Now, one of the things that sets this apart is uh, these sleeved pinions here. There's a solid steel sleeve that sits in there in the chuck halves and the pinion rotates in a bearing. Now, most chucks don't have that, and these pinions get sloppy, okay? This is a super heavy-duty, really well-built chuck. Uh, they use them on turret lathes. This uh, can be installed on a turret lathe, but you have to put the back plate to the A-type spindle, and... Um, and then put the chuck onto the back plate. But I have it on a D16 back plate. This is a plain back chuck held on with these heavy Allen bolts here. It looks like six of them. Okay. Got a four inch hole in this thing. That's big. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to set up and I'm going to um, grind these jaws. Okay, I'll get this on a tripod or something.
It ain't neutral here. Yes, see ya. Need to grind a little deeper. Hope you, hopefully you can see that. A little bit at the tip here. See there's a lot of wear. Looking good? Help you out. Okay, I think you can see that ground jaw there. I'm going to check this for radial runout real quick. I am going to grind these jaws again with a finer stone after using it for a little bit. This is a straight piece of steel even though it has a saw cut on it. See where we're at on there? That is not the master pinion. That is. Number two is the new master pinion here. Let's see how we're doing. It is showing. Let me go the other way. Get over. It is showing one thousandths run out. Now that was better than uh, nearly 20. <laughs> this will probably dial into about a half thousandths when I do the final grind um, with a fine stone. But since these jaws were splayed uh, uh, like they were, I'm going to use the chuck a little bit and let it get used to being a little more straight before I, I do another grind on a little light grind. Now, this should have been maintained all along. You know, when it started showing like 5,000s run out, the jaws should have been reground instead of showing 20. Okay? So I'm going to call this a video. That's out at the end there. I don't have a long piece in there, but it doesn't matter at this stage. We'll check in on this truck as time goes on. All right. You all have a good day. I will uh, limp along making videos. The, uh, the, I can't grind videos out every day because uh, the, the little camera I'm using uh, will not take the punishment. I, uh, this uh, GoPro's about shot. It's a, it's a GoPro 9. And if any of you got some extra batteries, you can send them to me. I don't want any money, but if you got batteries. But otherwise, what I got to do is my wife's going to uh, set up some kind of fund or something to buy a new GoPro with better sound and stuff like that. Now the little camera I'm using will not tolerate the uh, grinding dust and much, so I can't show any tool grinding. But that's the way it goes. Now I wanted to show this. This is a money-making thing here, a money-saving thing. I took a chuck that you can buy uh, for under a thousand dollars and restored it to, uh, uh, well, like new at thirty-five, thirty-six hundred dollars, three thousand dollars savings just by grinding the jaws. Now this fixture here predates me by probably eighty years. I think this this thing's been used for a hundred years. It's just nobody shows it on YouTube. People show a lot of stuff on YouTube they shouldn't show. Okay, have a good one.